Monster Hunter World Iceborne is a wonderful gaming experience with a whole host of content that Capcom has supported over the past few years. But now we have access to all the game has to offer and we can work towards the best of the best builds in the game. So I'm Dablade with the best of the best builds for the hammer in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now when I say a best of the best build, I mean a build that is constructed from some of the rarest armor, weaponry and jewels in the game. This gives hunters some of the strongest sets possible. For this series I'll be featuring 4 builds for the various weapons which should cater to a variety of playstyles. When it comes to the hammer, it's a strong DPS weapon that naturally comes with higher raw attack stats. Thus it primarily is used as a weapon that caters to raw attack rather than anything else. However, it has a few unique aspects, such as it's a blunt weapon, which allows it to knock out monsters, allowing for some unique and quirky builds. Most of the builds I use for the hammer are DPS focused, however, they are not all the same and you should find the builds in this video interesting. So the first build is the best of the best raw attack hammer build. This is a strong DPS build that has a very high raw attack. Thus we can use it against pretty much any monster in the game regardless of their elemental or ailment resistances and on top of that because we're using a lot of the Fatalis armor we can have a build that has a ton of quality of life and defensive options as well. So for this build you'll need the Brachidium Helm Beta, the Dragon Hide Beta, Dragon Claws Beta, Dragon Barbs Beta and the Dragon Feet Beta. I'm also using the Earplugs Charm 5. Please note that this is optional and you can easily swap this out if you so wish. And for my weapon I'm using the Fatalis Demolisher. This has a health regenerate augmentation and then an attack increase augmentation. As for the specialist tools, these as always are down to personal preference so I've gone for temporal and rocksteady mantles. Now when it comes to the jaws you've got a lot to play around with. So first of all we've gone for fortitude jaw for the fortify skill, attack jaws for the attack boost skill, Evasion Jaws for the Evade Window skill, Handicraft Jaw for the Handicraft skill, Challenger Jaw to max out the Agitated skill, Expert Jaws for some Critical Eye, Critical Jaws for the Crit Boost skill, Protection Jaws for Divine Blessing, and a Shaver Jaw for the Clutch Claw Boost skill. As for the Jaws and the Mantles, I've gone for more Protection Jaws to max out the Divine Blessing skill. Some of these Jaws are optional in all honesty, so you can drop the Shaver Jaw if you so desire, especially if you don't use your Slinger that much. An alternative would be to use KO Jewels for the Slugger skill, although the knockout potential even without the Slugger skill is very potent with the hammer, so I don't feel it's necessarily needed all the time. So, if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 200 health and 200 stamina, regardless of if you've taken all your relevant consumables. You'll have a massive raw attack of 2033 with a decent chunk of purple sharpness. You'll have 25% base affinity, which can be 95 when you take into account weakness exploit, as well as the buff from the Agitator skill. You have a Dragon Rating of 150 with High Elder Seal and you have a High Defense of 1111 that is strong against Water and Thunder but unfortunately weak to the other elements, especially Dragon. So as for the skills, first of all you have Attack Boost at level 7. This is a skill that increases the raw attack of a build and at level 4 or above it also grants us a bonus 5% affinity. You have Critical Eye at level 7 which increases the base affinity of this build. Very useful as the Fatalis Demolisher does come with negative affinity so the Critical Eye definitely helps counter this. You have Agitator at level 7. Agitator is a wonderful buff in Iceborne that kicks in whenever a monster becomes enraged. When this happens you'll be granted bonus raw attack as well as bonus affinity. And as you can easily control when a monster becomes enraged, thanks to the whole flint shot mechanic, Agitator should be active for the majority of the time you're actually fighting a monster. You have earplugs at level 5. This is an optional skill that is granted to us via the earplugs charm. This is a quality of life skill that allows us to ignore all monster roars. I find earplugs is very useful when it comes to the hammer as it stops you from being knocked out of your power stance or being knocked off of a monster when it's roaring and you're performing clutch claw attacks. However, you can swap this out if you so wish to increase your defense by going for a defensive skill or potentially increasing your offense by taking an offensive skill like peak performance. Anyway, next up is Evade Window at level 5. This is a skill that increases the invulnerability frames when we perform dodges and evades. Ultimately it allows us to roll through monster attacks and not get hit. You also have critical boost at level 3 which is a skill that grants us bonus damage when our attacks crit a monster. However this bonus damage is only applied to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental portion. But as this build is all about raw attack, it's going to allow this build to do a lot of extra damage. Next up is weakness exploit at level 3. This is a skill that grants us bonus affinity whenever we're attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through clutch claw attacks first, this bonus affinity can be even greater. Weakness exploits at level 3 can potentially provide us an extra 50% affinity. 
You have Divine Blessing at level 3 which can be potentially level 5 when we're wearing mantles. This is a defensive skill that gives us a chance at taking reduced damage when we take a hit from a monster. You also have Handicraft at level 2 which increases the sharpness of this weapon slightly. You have Fortify at level 1 which is a useful skill when it comes to taking on tough hunts in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Basically every time you faint and come back, you'll come back with increased raw attack and defense. Finally you'll have Clutch Claw Boost level 1 which for the heavy weapons means that your Clutch Claw attacks will not only tenderize in one hit but they'll also drop Slinger ammunition. And then finally you'll have the Fatalis Legend set bonus. For wearing two pieces you'll get the Inheritance bonus which allows us to break the level cap on certain skills in your build. With this build it only really applies to two skills, the first being the Agitator skill allowing us to get it from level 5 to a maximum of level 7 and potentially it could also apply to Divine Blessing but only when we're wearing our mantles. And finally for wearing four pieces of the Fatalis armor set you'll get the Transcendent set bonus. This allows our hunter to have 200 health and 200 stamina regardless of if we've taken consumables. This also will persist through death and on top of that it will also grant us the true razor sharp skill. Severely reducing the sharpness loss on our weapon allowing us to keep that purple sharpness for longer. So there you have it, as you can see it is a strong raw attack DPS build with all the essential DPS skills. On top of that it allows for a loss of quality of life and defensive options, making for a strong all round build. But every build out there in Monster Hunter World has pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its strong damage output. Having some of the highest raw attack DPS in the game for the hammer is able to take down monsters quickly. On top of that this build has a ton of quality of life and defensive skills. The Vade Window, Earplugs, Divine Blessing and more, it all makes hunts feel a little bit more easier than they are. And then finally for the pros, much like with any build that is using the Fatalis armor, is the Fatalis Legend set bonus itself, providing us a ton of offensive, defensive and quality of life options for making use of four pieces of the Fatalis armor. But when it comes to the cons, there are a few you need to be aware of. Firstly, sharpness can be an issue with this build. Okay we are using Handicraft to increase the purple sharpness and this combined with the true razor sharp will allow us to keep the purple sharpness for longer. It's still nonetheless something you need to be aware of. And on top of that, the final con is this is a dual heavy build, requiring some of the rarest jewels in the game, which can make it difficult to achieve if you have a small jewel collection. Nonetheless, this is probably one of the most powerful builds for the hammer in the game, and if you want a universal build that you can take against pretty much any monster, I'd strongly recommend this one. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the best of the best Frostcraft hammer build. Now normally I would be featuring an elemental build here, but with the hammer, the Frostcraft and elemental builds are kind of combined into one. Now this hammer build has a slightly different playstyle to the normal hammer build. For the most part we're instead focusing on performing brutal big bang attacks, so we're charging up the hammer all the time to unleash those strong charged attacks instead of going for its longer combos. This nonetheless is a strong DPS build which is made even stronger should you take into account a monster's elemental resistances. So for this build you'll need the Rhymeguard Helm Gamma, the Rhymeguard Mel Gamma, Frostfang Vambraces Beta, the Rhymeguard Coil Gamma and the Rhymeguard Greaves Gamma. I'm also using an Evasion Charm 5, this again can be optional, you can swap it out for something else if you so desire. And for my weapon I'm using the Elatrion Metamorph. This has a health regen augmentation and then an elemental up augmentation. You can of course use a different weapon with a different element but doing so you'll have to make some adjustments with the build. As always when it comes to the specialist tools these are down to personal preference so again I've gone for Rocksteady and Temporal Mantles. So when it comes to the jewels you've got a few to play around with. First of all I've gone for Tenderizer jewels for the weakness exploit skill, I've then gone for critical jewels for the crit boost skill, vitality jewels for the health boost skill, dragon jewels for the dragon attack skill, of course if you were using a different weapon that has a different element then you would replace the dragon jewels to match whatever new element you were using. I've then gone for a Fortitude Jewel for the Fortify skill and Expert Jewels for the Critical Eye skill. Finally the Jewels and the Mantles, they're kind of down to personal preference so I've gone for Attack Jewels for the Attack Boost skill. So if you've done what I've done here you'll have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have a raw attack of 1534 with a decent chunk of purple sharpness. You have 40% base affinity which can easily be 90% when you take into account weakness exploit. You have a dragon element rating of 1040 with low elder seal and you have a strong defense of 1109 that is strong against ice and water but unfortunately weak to the other elements. 
As for the skills, first of all, you have Critical Eye at level 7, you have Dragon Attack at level 6. Dragon Attack is a skill that increases the Dragon Rating and thus the Dragon Damage of this build. Of course, if you were using a different weapon with a different element, you would replace Dragon Attack to match whatever new element you were using. You have Evade Window at level 5. This is an optional skill in this build, to be honest, but it adds to the defense of this build. You have Health Boost at level 3, which is a skill that allows our health to get to the maximum of 200. You have Ice Attack at level 3, a byproduct of the armor we're wearing. However, if we were using an Ice Weapon, this would be handy as we wouldn't need to spend as many elemental jewels on the build. Anyway, you have Critical Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Focus level 3. Focus is a useful skill when you're using the Brutal Big Bang Hammer playstyle. It allows you to charge up the weapon more quickly. You have Critical Draw level 3, which is a skill that grants us bonus affinity up to 100% on our draw attacks. Ultimately, the first hit of the Brutal Big Bang should always be critting. You have Peak Performance at level 3, which is a skill that grants us bonus raw attack whenever we have full health. You have Quick Sheave level 3, which is a byproduct of the armor, but it's still useful. This allows us to sheave the weapon more quickly. You have Coalescence level 3, which is a buff that kicks in whenever we remove a Blight or Ailment from our Hunter. This will grant us bonus raw attack, bonus elemental attack, and bonus ailment if we were using an ailment weapon. Next up is Fortify at level 1. You'll then have Resuscitate at level 1, which is a useful defensive skill and a byproduct of the armor. Resuscitate kicks in whenever we have a Blight on our Hunter. When this happens, we'll gain increased evasion capabilities as well as reduced stamina consumption. And then finally, when you're wearing your mantles, you'll have Attack Boost at level 2. Finally, for the set bonuses, you'll have three of them. Two of them attached to the Velkana Divinity. First of all, for wearing two pieces of the Velkana armor, you'll get the Critical Element set bonus. This works like critical boost, but applies to the elemental portion of an attack. So, when our attacks crit a monster, they should deal increased elemental damage. But the main event for this build is the Frostcraft set bonus for wearing 4 pieces of the Velkana armor. This grants an additional gauge underneath our stamina bar. This fills up whenever we have our weapon sheathed. With this bar filled, it grants us bonus damage. But with each swing of the weapon, it drains this gauge a little bit, and you can only refill it by sheathing your weapon again. And then finally you'll have the Frostfang Absolute Art Punish and Draw that adds a stun effect to our draw attacks as well as increased attack power. This on top of the hammer's natural ability to knock out monsters is useful when it comes to crowd control. So there you have it, as you can see it's a unique hammer build that makes use of the Frostcraft armor set, thus giving you a different way of playing the hammer. Obviously like I said if you don't like performing the charged attacks and going into the brutal big bang attacks, you're not going to get on with this build. However, for me personally, I find it fun to use and a different way to play. But even this build comes with pros and cons. Its biggest pro is its damage output, both elemental and raw. These combined together make for a strong DPS build that can take down monsters quickly, especially if you take into account their elemental weaknesses. On top of that, this build has quite a few quality of life skills, including invade window, health boost, focus and more. It allows you to survive hunts. And then finally for the pros is the Frostcraft set bonus, which not only grants us increased attack and damage, but it also makes things fresh by changing the hammer playstyle slightly. Unfortunately though, every build out there has cons. One of the biggest cons for this build is if you were to use a different weapon with a different element, then you may have to make sacrifices in the build, as the Elatrion Metamorph Hammer is quite unique and there aren't many weapons like it that use different elements. And on top of that, much like the previous build, the Overcon is again, this is a jewel heavy build requiring some of the rarest jewels in the game. But nonetheless, if you're able to get your hand on a decent set of jewels as well as the Rhyme Guard Gamma Armor set, you're going to have a powerful DPS build. As I mentioned, so long as you're changing your playstyle slightly, making use of those charge attacks as well as the Brutal Big Bang attacks, you're going to have a fun build with the hammer. Which brings us on to our third build, which is normally a quirky niche build, which for the hammer, I like to call the best of the best crowd control build. This build makes use of the hammer's natural ability to knock out monsters combined with the paralysis ailment. Now there are two approaches to this build. You can either approach it using the Safi Jiva armor set or the Gold Raffian armor set. Either are fine, it's down to personal choice. For this build, I'll be making use of the Safi armor set. So for this you'll need the Safi Crested Crown Beta, the Safi Crested Chest Beta, Safi Crested Van Braces Beta, Safi Crested Belt Beta, and the Safi Crested Boots Beta. For my charm I'm using the Challenger Charm 5, and for my weapon I'm using the Kia Hammer Num. This has a health regen augmentation and then an ailment up augmentation. 
As for the specialist tools, these are down to personal preference, but as always, I've gone for the temporal and rocksteady mantles. So when it comes to the jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with. So first of all, I've gone for a fortitude jewel for the fortify skill. I've then gone for a KO jewel for the slugger skill, vitality jewels for the health boost skill, resistor jewel, which is optional for the blight resistance skill, a sated jewel, which again is optional for the free mill skill, tenderizer jewels for weakness exploit, evasion jewels for the evade window, Paralyzer Jewels for the Paralysis Attack skill and a Sharp Jewel for the Protective Polish skill. As for the Jewels and the Mantles, again I've gone for Attack Jewels for the Attack Boost skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables, you have a raw attack of 1487 with a small amount of white sharpness. You have 60% base affinity, which can well be over 100% when you take into account the buff from Agitator as well as Weakness Exploit. In all honesty, it could be considered a little bit overkill, but nonetheless, it guarantees that we're critting a monster for the majority of a hunt. You have a Paralysis rating of 820. Please note that the Paralysis rating and base affinity stats taken here are with the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff in effect. And you have a decent defense of 1081 that is strong against every element, especially fire, but unfortunately weak to dragon. So, as for the skills, first of all, you have Agitator at level 5, you have Evade Window at level 5, Paralysis Attack at level 4. This is a skill that increases the paralysis rating and buildup of the ailment, allowing us to paralyze a monster and thus crowd control in it more often. You have health boost at level 3, blight resistance at level 3. Blight resistance is a combination of optional jewels and byproducts found on the armor, which helps us negate all elemental blights on our hunter. You have crit boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, slugger level 3. Slugger is another decent crowd control skill that allows us to knock out monsters more easily. And this combined with the paralysis attack should allow us to crowd control a monster multiple times, leaving them open for our longer combos. You also have fortify at level 1, free mill at level 1. Free mill is a result of the optional sated jewel that gives us a chance at not consuming a potion or other consumable when we actually use it. You have protective polish level 1 which is a counter to the small amount of white sharpness we have. This is a buff that kicks in after you sharpen your weapon. When you do so, it will put a protective coating over your sharpness gauge, preventing all sharpness loss for a small duration of time. You also have critical status at level 1, which increases the ailment potency whenever our attacks crit a monster, potentially allowing us to paralyze a monster more often. And finally, you'll have attack boost level 2 when you're wearing your mantles. You also have the Sappy Jeeva Seal set bonus, True Dragon Vein Awakening. This is a buff that kicks in whenever we have our weapon drawn. With our weapon drawn, it will grant us a bonus 40% base affinity and increased ailment rating. But there is a downside to this. With each swing of the weapon, it will drain a portion of our health, leaving a small portion of red health on our health bar. This can potentially leave us at risk. However, should we continuously attack and our hits land against the monster, then the true Dragon Vayner Awakening will initiate a heal, healing us for the health it drained. So there we have it. That is the best of the best crowd control build that I tend to use. Using the hammer's natural ability to knock out a monster combined with the paralysis ailment, it's surprising how often the monster will be immobile and open to your longer, harder hitting combos. But of course every build out there has pros and cons. When it comes to this build, its biggest pro is its crowd control capabilities, combining paralysis with the slugger skill, it allows you to crowd control a monster and as I said, leaves them open to strong attacks. On top of that, this build also again comes with a lot of quality of life options and defensive options. From evade window to health boost to blight resistance to more. It all makes a hunt feel easier than it is. And then finally for the pros is the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff itself, providing us a ton of DPS options for simply having our weapon drawn. But unfortunately there are cons to this build. One of the biggest cons is unfortunately it only has a small portion of white sharpness which you can burn through pretty quickly. Protective Polish does counter this slightly, but it's still an issue you need to be aware of. And the other con is the True Dragon Vein Awakening Health Drain, which can leave you at risk at carting if you're not careful. But if you like to crowd control a monster, you prefer to use ailments more than raw attack or elemental builds, this is one I can recommend. It's fun, functional, and it still hits quite hard. 
One option though, before I move on to the final build, is you can potentially swap out the Challenger Jewel if you so wish, as we already have that 100% affinity with the True Dragon Vein Awakening buff and Weakness Exploit. So you can swap out the Challenger Jewel, like I said, for something like the Resentment Charm, which would give you the Resentment skill that will increase our raw attack on this build for having a portion of red health on our health bar, which should be active most of the time. But as always, that is one of the great things about Monster Hunter. There are tons of options when it comes to the builds in the game. Anyway, the fourth and final build for the hammer is the best of the best guide and lands hammer build. This is a strong, functional, raw attack DPS build that you can take into the Guidance Lands, use it against pretty much any monster, and farm the endgame area quite effectively. So, for this build, you'll need the Brachidium Helm Beta, the Dragon Hide Beta, Dragon Claws Beta, Dragon Barbs Beta, and Dragon Feet Beta. I'm also using the Challenger Charm 5, and for my weapon, again, I'm using the Fatalis Demolisher that has a health regen augmentation and then attack increase augmentation. As for the specialist tools, again, their personal preference, so I've gone for Temporal and Rocksteady Mantles. So when it comes to the jewels, again, you've got a ton to play around with. So first of all, I've gone for a Fortitude Jewel for the Fortify skill, Attack Jewels for the Attack Boost skill, Hard Geology Jewel for the Geologist skill, Destroyer Jewels for Part Breaker, Evasion Jewels for Evade Window, Expert Jewels for some Critical Eye, Critical Jewels for the Crit Boost skill, Protection Jewels for Divine Blessing, Handicraft Jewels for the Handicraft skill, and then finally a Challenger Jewel to max out the Agitator skill. As for the jewels on the mantles, these are down to personal preference, so I've gone for dragon jewels for the dragon attack skill. So, if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 200 health, 200 stamina, regardless of if we've taken consumables or not. You have a raw attack of 2033, with a small chunk of purple sharpness. You have 25% base affinity, which can be 95 when you take into account the agitator buff as well as weakness exploit. You have dragon elemental rating of 150 with high elder seal, and you have a strong defense of 1111. That is strong against thunder and water, but unfortunately weak to the other elements, especially dragon. So when it comes to the skills, this will be very similar to the first build featured in this video. You have attack boost at level 7, critical eye at level 7, agitator at level 7, evade window at level 5, divine blessing at level 5, crit boost at level 3, weakness exploit at level 3, part breaker at level 3. Part breaker is an essential skill for the guiding lands. Part breaker on its own allows us to break monster body parts more easily, but when it comes to the guiding lands, it allows us to knock off monster materials more easily, ultimately leading to more loot. You have Geologist level 3. Geologist in the Gaiden Lands is another essential skill, however you only really need it at level 1. But nonetheless, given the jewel sockets we had, you might as well get it to level 3. Geologist is a skill when it comes to the Gaiden Lands that allows us to loot the monster materials that are knocked off of the monsters twice instead of once, at least against the high tier monsters. On top of that, when it comes to the bone piles and mining notes, you're able to farm them an additional time thanks to having Geologist at level 3. You also have Handicraft at level 2, Fortify at level 1, and when you're wearing your mantles, you have Dragon Attack at level 2. Finally, for the set bonuses, you'll have the Fatalis Legend set bonus again, which includes Inheritance and Transcendence. So, there you have it. That is the best of the best Guiding Lands Hammer build that I tend to use. As you can see, it bears many similarities to the first build featured in this video, so it can be used against pretty much any monster, regardless of their defenses. But, as always, there are pros and cons. When it comes to the pros for this build, its strongest pro is its massive damage output, able to deal a ton of damage to monsters regardless of the defenses as I said, and take them down quickly and efficiently. On top of that, this build makes use of all the skills associated to the Guidance Lands, from Part Breaker, Geologist to Fortify, these all help when it comes to farming this endgame area. And then finally when it comes to the pros is, again, this build has the Fatalis set bonus which grants us increased attack, increased defense, and increased quality of life overall. But, of course, there are cons. Much like the first build, this shares pretty much the same cons. First of all, there are sharpness issues with this build, unfortunately. There'll be times where you drop down to white or even blue sharpness, so that's something to be aware of. And again, this is a build that is very jewel heavy, requiring some of the rarest jewels in the game to make work. But if you're able to get your hand on a decent jewel collection, as well as the Fatalis armor, you're able to create one of the most powerful builds in the game to take into the Gaiden lands and farm it effectively and efficiently. So there we have it. Those are the best of the best builds for the hammer. Now these builds are aimed to be strong general builds, able to take on pretty much any task in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. But if you wanted to take on a specific tough monster, such as the Latrion on Fatalis, you could make adjustments here and there. Also, these builds may be slightly different from other meta builds found in the community, but regardless, these are the strongest builds that I personally like to use in the game, and I hope they will help you in your hunts. 
So until next time, I've been Dark Blade, bringing you the best of the best builds for the hammer in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like for more.